Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Mani Minazuddin. I'm uh, happy to host you folks at uh, VMware campus. Um, really good words, so I would say, hey, in the break, go check out our good coffee. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so uh, my name is Manit Minhazuddin. I run solutions and product marketing at um, VMware. Uh, my team is responsible for our cloud marketing efforts, our security go-to-market efforts, as well as our digital workspace efforts. So uh, I'm in a unique position to be able to see the portfolio across the company and see how do we you know, maximize synergies across all our portfolio. And you know, security is a, is a key topic for us because, as you know, a lot of our portfolio has made huge kind of progress in the areas of security. So I'm going to touch about, you know, touch on how VMware perceives security and what's uh, our point of view. Um, we're going to touch on a lot of topics in the four hours you have, and I'm not going to go into the details, but this is more of an overview session to say, what are the different areas we cover? To start with, it's a pretty broken area, <laughs> right? Uh, we see there's this enormous increase of, you know, um, breaches happening all the time. The cost of breaches are kind of constantly going up. At the same time, the amount of, you know, uh, the rate at which your malware samples are, you know, mutating is pretty fast. Uh, and the, the big issue is there's a lot of vendors, like, you know, we've done latest kind of surveys and we found a lot of our CISOs are reporting, they have a lot of security tools. Um, so a lot of security tools on average between 70 to 80, you know, security tools in, the, in their environment. And they still don't feel secure <laughs> because they don't know what's, going to come next? Are they prepared or are they not prepared? So um, the fundamentally, there's an issue there as to how do we you know, look at it more systemically? Do we solve point problems here or do we step back and you know, address it in a, in a broader way? Uh, so VMware's point of view is, hey, how do we address this in a, um, you know, a broader point of view? What we found, and this is very, even this year of 2019, starting from you know the, all the announcements at RSA, everything that was happening, and you know observe what's going on, we see a lot of the innovation happen in the areas of you know, reaction. People are chasing threats. This goes to almost 80% of investments we observe from enterprises is going down towards you know how do I you know really chase threats and stop all the bad actors from coming in and you know uh, that. That's reflective also in the new areas of. Uh, investment from venture capitalists. A lot of the startups happening in these areas are also in the areas of reaction. So we found, um, at least this in 2019, a lot of folks are maniacally focused on chasing threats. However, is actually a, strategically a better way to uh, prevent threats. So it's like, hey, detect a response with this protection and prevention. We actually believe that in order for you to, you know, have a biggest impact, that needs to be reversed. This needs to be reversed so that you know, you've laid some foundational elements in how do you secure and you know, focus on prevention and protection rather than just chasing threats. And it's not stop doing chasing threats, it's how you do the combination. So right now the industry is maniacally you know, over rotated on chasing threats and how do we kind of switch that into a more balanced way of both reactive and proactive. Uh, it's not, everybody's not doing that. There are some very successful companies doing that. Uh, and VMware's point of view is really say, how do we get the foundation right? Where are investments to make this foundational element? And you know, this is supported by you know, different analyst views of really, hey, where do we Bills, um, you know, where to be focused on? Is it really about hey, is it antivirus down all the way to hardening and you know having zero trust as well as you know uh, least privileged kind of elements? So in this scale, um, our point of view is let's focus on the green. Let's put some really fundamental secure infrastructure down so that you know people can evolve and innovate on the top. And in that process. Uh, I'm not sure, you know, I'd encourage folks if, you know, Pat had this point of view launched at RSA. If you haven't seen it, I'd encourage you to go um, look at that if you haven't already seen that. But, you know, he kind of pushed this at RSA to kind of say, hey, this is what needs to change in the industry. And what is VMware doing about it, right? I think really we're trying to see how do we kind of shift this focus? How do you reduce the attack surface? And as I said, really starts with you know, understanding your application behavior. How do you understand your application behavior to, and leverage that to reduce your attack surface? You have to do the combination of both chasing threats as well as locking down what's known good. Because, um, and I have this really rich um, conversations with CISOs, even, you know, I flew back from the Gartner Security Symposium uh, earlier in Washington DC this week. And a lot of conversation about what are my crown jewels? Do I know my crown jewels? A lot of the people don't understand where the crown jewels are. 
Do I protect everything or do I identify my crown jewels and create classification categories that I can say this is you know, super important to me so I'm going to protect it in a different, very different way. But a lot of the times people are not able to understand what the you know, app really looks like. They're going, oh, do I know my apps? I own my apps. Do I have too many security products. Can I automate these? The reason being a fundamental shift in the market is happening where this was easy. You're in the client server era and you know, before we kind of opened up, we were having jokes about you know, TCP and UDP kind of uh, act and you know, back and forth. It was kind of easy when the environment was a client server. I knew where my server <laughs> cluster was. I knew how it's getting accessed in a very fixed environment. But the nature of applications is changing. The nature of uh, applications is changing because the applications now are everywhere because they are kind of getting out of the data center. They're moving out to, you know, in the cloud space. They're going into being accessed not by fixed um, uh, PCs anymore, but laptops, mobile devices, everywhere you go. They're actually being rewritten in cloud native distributed architectures, which means your application is spread out everywhere. Your data is following. Data is not limited to your data center anymore. <laughs> Um, it's actually getting out of the data center. Um, how do you protect it? The same security principles and policies and frameworks that you've used and controls that were there for a client server environment are not going to scale for this software distributed environment. So you got to do something differently. You got to do something differently which is elastic and it scales with the software, with your application, if it's extending from the data center to the cloud or going back to the edge. And that's really, you know, how do you do that? And it's more powerfully done in software. And you know, us being VMware, right? So <laughs> we believe that as you do the abstraction, as you do the abstraction of applications and data from the hardware, we can leverage a lot of the fundamental, you know, virtualization capabilities. Because you know, what are the elements you get in virtualization? We abstract the application away from hardware. You know, you we know how to provision it, how it is, where is it running. We can fully automate it because it's completely available as infrastructure as a service. So I can put all you know, automation principles of you know, security controls and policies in software and push it out. And also, we can intrinsically build it into the you know, infrastructure as a software platform, not you know, hardware itself. So that's kind of our approach to say, hey, we're very good at virtualization. We've been doing it for 21 years. We're 21 years old. We're finally breaking out. And you know, we're adults. We can do stuff. <laughs> um, but really, we can do stuff, but we have the power of virtualization that we can leverage for this abstraction, for automation, and you know, building it intrinsically into the, you know, the platform. So we have, over a period of time, slowly invested into, you know, I think the first one, which we're not going into detail today, is you know, NSX. You know, NSX was a clear opportunity when you said, hey, Networking done a different way. Network virtualization. I can virtualize layer two to layer seven. Well, I can do a lot of things with that. But you know, the first door opener was really microsegmentation. We could do distributed firewall because I don't have to do a lot of east-west. Um, I can do east-west on my edge firewall, but guess what? It's going to create a lot of latency, hairpinning, and traffic, and I, my rules are going to be 800,000 plus. But if I can put it in software and embed it into my distributed workload, Boom, I can have a very distributed distributed firewall. So NSX, big progress in that. That was the kind of first kind of milestone. But we've gone in and also added you know, capabilities into the hypervisor itself. You'll hear you know, speakers after me come and talk about how we're addressing you know, vulnerabilities, compliance, security in, in the hypervisor itself. And um, we've added, which is on the infrastructure side, so compute network storage. What are we doing? How are we building intrinsic security into the platform? And on the access side, really, how do we you know, look at users, access, devices, and secure that too? Uh, because you know, a lot of attacks happen from the user end. <laughs> um, so you have to kind of try to build this. And we're not doing it all ourselves. We actually rely on a large you know, ecosystem of partners that we work with. So, and you know, most of, some of the folks are probably here, right? So we have a larger ecosystem to say, um, how do we address this more fundamentally, more systemically in the foundation? And, intrinsically built it in. Now, really the unique attributes you get out of this is first intrinsic in nature of it. So it's built into the platform. So I, you know, I can not have to go bolt on new capabilities. Huge difference between what you call intrinsic versus integrated. We're not taking you know, security capabilities and integrating into our product. We're intrinsically building it into the hypervisors. We're building it into you know, the users and devi devices. Deep app visibility. This is huge, and I'll get I'll double click into each of these three attributes, right? Uh, and app visibility is is huge because 
generally when everybody talks about app visibility, it's about, oh, I know what protocol you are. I can identify what you are and here's a check mark. That's more like a, hey, I've got my ID card and I, I can tell you who I am. But when we talk about app visibility, we want to know everything about the app. We want to know the app topology, the app composition, you know, it is a, you know, what are all the app boundaries because that construct is changing. Because it used to be, again, fixed. You know, oh, I got a client server three tier app. I know my web tier, my app tier, my load balancing tier, my database tier. I can put them into separate VLAN segments. I lock it in. Not anymore. <laughs> I got a very distributed cloud native kind of app that is very moving around. It's growing and shrinking. Do I know my app boundary? Can I apply security policies and control points in that elastic software nature that keeps up with either shrinking and growing apps which are getting distributed, you know, migrated into public clouds or into the edge? Can you keep up? That kind of app visibility, app composition and app topology, critical to you know, success in this future cloud mobile era. And finally, automation because one of the issues we face is there are so many control points that if you manually do what you're trying to do in this environment, I, I'm trying to use decent words, but you're, you're not going anywhere, <laughs> right? Um, but really, that is hard. Uh, you want to get to the point of you know, automation to get more efficient as to how you do this. Because first, you got to clean up your act, clear, have a clear foundation, have an operational mindset where you know that you know, you've got better control in software. And third, only then can you automate these. Because if you don't automate, the amount of control points and the amount of vulnerabilities is only going to be expanding. If you have automation, um, lo and behold, everybody talks about AI and ML. Why should too, right? But no, but truly, you know, machine learning where you can learn something out of this, the control signals from you know, all your devices everywhere and you know, optimize that, that only comes with automation because there's no AI ML without automation. You're still stuck in you know, CMDB scripts and looking at logs and you know, parsing through that. You don't get automation with that. It's got to happen in software. And finally, as I said, a lot of this infrastructure stopped being just in your data center. This infrastructure is scaled beyond your data center. It's going from your data center into public clouds, into the edge, and you know, our uh, focus unique value proposition as we build our cloud strategy is how does security follow that? Because we've taken our VMware stack, vSphere, vSAN, NSX, automation, everything, our you know, whole data center stack. And we have strategically partnered with Amazon. We made an announcement to their shore. We're all public cloud providers to move our stack into all their platforms so that you can move not just your applications, but security controls, network policies, you know, all your requirements easily wherever you want to go. So it has to be multi-cloud enabled. And that comes fundamentally in being able to build these capabilities in software intrinsically and move them around. So just to double click. Intrinsic, what do we mean? And I, I know the speakers after me are going to do a lot of detail into how that, you know, we're kind of bolstering up the um, hypervisor to do this. But, you know, really the hypervisor is kind of the main control point. And again, us being VMware, um, we have access to most of the applications, kind of we boot them on our hypervisor. We know we are root. We understand every you know, um, heuristic signal of how much CPU, how much <laughs> you know, memory, how much RAM requests you're making back and forth. So we're actually able to you know, understand what that is. So we have the ability to build that into the infrastructure, understand what's going on, protect against any lateral threats. Because a lot of the times, you know, people come in and then laterally hop around. So we can control that at the hypervisor level. And then not just at the, the compute layer, also at the you know, endpoint layer, right? So we can kind of get that. So when we talk about intrinsic, we building it, these capabilities into the hypervisor. The second part, where we actually talk about intelligent automation. And this is, again, going back to the notion of, in software, we understand application. We understand the, the manifest of that application, which means when the application is born, we know what it's supposed to do. We know the entire heuristics of what it's supposed to do. So if it's a database, if it's a web server, we know that it's going to have a certain footprint. It's going to have a certain amount of CPU cycles in, in, in known good state, right? Uh, CPU cycles, this much memory, this much uh, read-write IOPS. It's going to be a lot of I IOPS if it's a database. <laughs> Everybody's reading and writing to it. It's a web server. There's a lot of web traffic coming to it. So you know what good looks like. You kind of lock, lock that in, and then you look for any deviations, you look for any drifts. Um, that is huge because doing that keeps up with your application. You can put the boundary around the application um, components, not multi-tier 
apps anymore. You can't apply it to multi-tier. I'm not saying that you can't apply it to, you know, your three-tier, you know, client-server architecture. But more and more in the cloud environment, I can apply it to the software boundaries of the application. So yes, if I, I'm out of capacity, I'm spinning up a new web server cluster in, in Amazon because I'm a retailer for extra bandwidth and capacity, boom, my all my policies follow as I spin them up. That's only possible in software. And then as you spin it up, you know that your policies are being transferred in there because through automation. If you don't do it in software, you're restricted. When we talk about this multi-cloud capabilities, how do we move around? Fundamental issue of cloud migration of workloads is security, dependency of your application on hardware, because your applications, if you're not truly virtualized in a data center, compute network storage security, uh, they won't migrate properly <laughs> because, you know, they have been not liberated from hardware requirements. The moment you have any hardware requirements, you move over, it's going to look hunt for the same kind of hardware spec. It's not a public cloud environment anymore. It's a managed hosted. And we've all been doing that for 20 years, <laughs> right? Because you go to a, um, a data center outside yours and look for a certain hardware specification, you're logged into a dedicated data center outside your on-prem. You're not looking at a true public cloud which scales in software. So being able to understand the manifest of the application, the topology of the application, and scale wherever you go, and more importantly, not just scale up, scale down, <laughs> and clean up as you come away. So understanding your breathing nature of your application boundaries is powerful, and how do you kind of go about doing that? Um, and finally, when you actually come into secure access, being able to look at your, you know, who's accessing, what are the credentials, are they who they say they are, are they, you know, on trusted devices, what's the device posture, and what is the access lead, are they allowed access or not? This is fundamental on how we approach it. And our innovation, again, in the, you know, in the digital workspace environment has been historically desktop, virtual desktop, today to mobile and all types of devices because, you know, device user access, we've virtualized the end user stack the same way, uh, like we did the, you know, virtualization infrastructure stack, the same way we, you know, we're take, able to take device, OS, um, you know, wall garden app stores, their own kind of, and, and you know, consolidate that across any device. Um, and that's kind of really our workspace one, being able to give that capability. So, um, so really, we truly believe that, you know, our intrinsic security software, you know, approach is fundamental to how we can shift the industry. There's a lot of stats, you know, we've done a lot of research with a lot of customers at VMware IT ourselves. Um, you know, we took this approach maybe four or five years ago. Um, we had 100 plus security vendors and products in our IT environment, like every other vendor. And um, today, maybe like two years in, we're able to half the number of products because we're able to put better controls into the infrastructure. And today, we're halving that again. Um, it's not that it's not, they're not, you know, it's not that you know, they don't add any value, but if you're able to put the controls into the infrastructure, you don't need a lot of the extra pieces you're trying to bolt on on top. And a lot of them don't keep up with our kind of dynamic nature. A lot of our public cloud spend is huge. We have tens of millions of dollars of public cloud spend. A lot of our products being built are cloud native by nature. Almost 40, 50% of the products we build that you see and touch from VMware are cloud natively built. So we cannot keep up with the same security controls in the past. We have to evolve as a company <laughs> and transform to support um, this notion of you know, multi-cloud, fully uh, software-based, intrinsic, and full automation. Because really, I think when you get to the automation pieces, when you get true liberation from um, the security controls which tie you down. So that's VMware's point of view. Um, I know I probably got a few minutes more, so happy to take any questions. It's sort of bothering you, but there's a lot more detail that the guys will follow. Um, we're going to talk about, you know, the vSphere component of it. We're going to talk about, you know, app defense as well as, you know, um, our end user workspace one. Uh, we did a lot of kind of NSX pieces already, so we're not going to touch that. We'll touch that again in VM World time frame. We'll have some more exciting announcements there. A <laughs> um, few minutes. Any top of mind questions? So I got a question for you. It's more of a, I guess, a point of view question. So VMware really has probably helped to really start the whole cloud thing with the virtualization and, and enabling cloud services. Sure. So in, in a way, VMware can be considered responsible for a lot of the security problems that are in the cloud. So with all the tools that VMware is doing, how much do you think is an ownership problem versus an opportunity problem? Sure. I'll give a two-part answer. Yes, we're responsible for abstracting you know, workloads away from hardware, giving birth to the cloud. We're not responsible for monetizing it. It's the Amazons and the shores of the wall, right? Um, 
Uh, one of the things, though, and, and it's a kind of complicated response to it, is ownership versus opportunity. That liberation was required so that everybody has the access they have today. Um, so I don't, you know, we feel that we created a new kind of market area for this. Uh, it came with its own challenges. Every new opportunity <laughs> comes with its own challenges. We didn't monetize on it. We realized that you know the security envelope kind of expanded into in a in a wider arena. The tax surface went hugely below above your data center into everywhere. Um, we feel response like we feel we can solve the problem. Initial issues and and it's just fundamentally uh, giving you the cloud answer, right? The early movers like Amazon they tried to make the experience in cloud, the way you administer everything, to be exactly the same like data centers. So this is like a huge jump in people kind of going, this looks exactly like what I do. I can get up there <laughs> and move my workloads, right? Um, Microsoft had the opportunity really to have, you know, I've got a lot of enterprise workloads, I've got a lot of applications, I go get Azure and great strategy and build everything on Azure and, you know, bring one of those. But and the third, uh, Google, typical, was like, like I don't care. You got next gen cloud native apps that are going to need high uh, intensity data analytics. Uh, then come to my cloud, right? So the reason I give you that kind of variation on the clouds is everybody's driver is slightly different. You find that all of them are very successful, but customers have an affinity to go to a certain cloud, right? So if you're early movers, you're in Amazon. If you're a big Microsoft, you know, environment, you're in Azure. If you're completely cloud native and a lot of data analytics, you're in Google. Now, yes, we virtualize the hardware, but the drivers for everybody is very different. The first instance is all IaaS. I want to go infrastructure as a service. The second is my business critical applications, is my enterprise applications that Microsoft supports, Active Directory, Office 365. My, everything's going there, so I got to follow there. Um, the security controls vary based on that. Right, uh, and and then and then GCP. It's all about you know cloud native applications. Can I do micro segmentation, security policy at a container level? Can I do that? Uh, so the drivers are slightly different for people to go there. We see different kind of use cases why people go there. However, we feel our you know at VMware our capability to take this and move everywhere, right? Because our we're strategically taking our stack and landed into bare metal into each of these providers, as well as. Um, done partnerships with them to move at the workload level. We feel we have the right controls, that we can do the hybrid nature of people, the same policies they've applied on-prem, and move it wherever they want. So we find an opportunity in that to say, hey, we created the notion of a cloud. Now that's broken out in the last decade and is doing several things. We have the ability to kind of pull that back and build a lot of these security controls in the infrastructure and the way we scale we can push these consistently across all the clouds. So yes, we created the, uh, the notion of a cloud breakout, but we are in the position also to you know, give some controls back.